Hey guys, um, so it's kind of dark, I'm sorry, but it's like 12, 19, oh, 20, <laughs> 20 in like the morning, so, or at night, technically, but it's a.m. Yeah, it's like, I should be sleeping, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm kind of a night owl, but, um, anyways, so that's why it's dark, so sorry, hopefully that's not annoying. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about this amazing book that I got uh, about a, two weeks or maybe a week and a half ago. It's a uh, book, Book of Shadows, Solitary Witch by uh, Silver, Silver Ravenwolf, which I know she's a controversial person, um, but I'm, I'm liking this book so far, and I'm not very far in it. I'm like on page 20, but um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, I'm Wiccan, um, and you know, I'm not, I'm fairly new to the Wiccan community, I guess. I'm more of a solitary practitioner, but that's not out of choice, that's out of, I don't know many Wiccans, so kind of, it is what it is, I'm just solitary for now, but hopefully that changes one day and I could join a coven or, you know meet some people and learn from them because I'm always interested in learning and just learning as much as I can. I mean, that's what life is, right? You learn something new every day, or I try to learn something new every day. Um, but this book is definitely, it's, it's really good so far. Uh, I wanted to read one thing to you guys so far from this book. Um, just because I liked it and it was a cute little story and I think Wiccans out there would like this story. Okay, so I have to put my glasses on for this, I'm sorry. I usually I avoid wearing my glasses for videos because, as you can see, the glare from my computer screen kind of screws up seeing my eyes. So I'm sorry about that. I just I need to do that in order to read to you guys, obviously. Cleaning them first would be a good idea. Um, so it's called The Creation Story. It's on page... 18, part 1 of uh, this book. And I just thought it was kind of cool because, uh, you know, every religion has a creation story, as uh, the author mentioned somewhere. But, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, this is the creation story for Wicca, I guess, or paganism, maybe just Wicca. I don't know. <coughs> uh, if I mispronounce anything, I'm really sorry. Just bear with me. Okay, so, the creation story. The basic creation story tells of the birth of the cosmos. It explains how a nothing became a something. This is kind of introducing the story, but yeah. Every culture, religion, and civilization has, somewhere within its history, the myth of creation. These symbolic narratives often recognize specific teachings that are sacred to the generation to that generation and contain metaphors to explain how the society sees itself within its worldview. Our creation story can be read during a dedication ceremony at, at a Samhain ritual or any other event where the seeker is to be reminded of his or her roots and the decision he or she has made to become one with the spirit of the witches. It can also be performed in ritual drama with the addition of musical instruments, singing, and drums. Okay, so now it jumps into the story. <clears throat> long, long ago, there was only darkness, a deep, ebony ocean of empty infinity, the void that was no place. From this place of nothingness, spirit drew in upon itself, and with a mighty burst of joyful vibration, our Lady of Light exploded into being. Her essence, the, to the totality of perfect love and perfect trust. 
In her heart she held the presence of spirit, and there was no part of her that was not of the divine. In delight Our Lady began the great work. She danced among the heavens, her bare feet beating out the rhythm of all creation, giving birth to every pattern, pattern of energy as sparks of light catapulted from her flying hair and extended fingertips. She created the stars and planets and bid them to dance with her. As they began to move, so the cycle of the year was born, and the divine symphony of the universe came into form. She gave them names of power, each unto their own. These things moved from the void into the thought given the breath of life and then into the world. Our Lady chanted the words of perfect love and perfect peace, and as these sounds fell to the earth, the trees, flowers, and grasses took root in the fertile soil of Gaia. From the pure white light of her breath came the colors of the universe, turning all things to vibrant beauty. From the bubbling laughter in her throat sprang the sounds of the clear running water of the streams, the gentle lapping vibrations of the lake, and the roaring of the oceans. Her tears of happiness became the reins of our, of our survival. Our Lady was the presence, and the presence Our Lady. And when her dancing slowed, the Lady sought a companion to share the wonders of the many worlds. As the Holy Spirit, she created the God as her soulmate. Because Our Lady so loved the earth, the energy pattern of the God contained both the essence of the presence and the divine energy of the earth. And he was known by many names. Green man, lord of the forest, king of the fields, and father, son, and sage. Together the Lord and Lady created all the beings of earth. The Lord's power moved through her, and she showered the earth and all upon it with her blessings. Together they designed the birds, animals, fishes, insects, reptiles, and people of our world. To protect and guide the humans, the Lord and Lady fashioned the angels, guides, and spirits of power. These energies still walk with us, although we often cannot see them. To each being, Our Lady gave a unique vibration in which to communicate, and the Lord bestowed to each the fire of passion and the burning instinct to survive. As a gift for his magnificent handiwork in caring for the creatures of earth, Our Lady gave our Lord a crown of stag antlers, which he wears upon his great head. This aspect of half man, half animal would forever show his joy in both the human and animal creations of the present. The crown will always be a symbol that people can spiritually work with the duality of their own natures to reach into the core of spirit. Together the Lord and Lady bless the first humans with free will. We are of the gods and the gods are us, the people cried. And the Lord and Lady smiled. We are all one, said Our Lady. And through a web of silver light, she connected each human to the other, and then linked the humans to all other energy patterns on the planet. When this was done, she wove herself and her Lord into the divine tapestry of pulsating energy. Love is the law, honor is the bond, said the Lord, as he empowered the tapestry of life. Our Lady has many names, Isis, Astarte, Bride, Diana, Aradia, Inanna, Heke, Mitsu, Gami, and thousands more. The Lady walks within and beside each woman and man of every race and every place. She is the maiden mother in Chrome. In Chrome, Chrome. Sorry. She is the sacred trinity of all religions. Indeed, she is the Holy Ghost. The Lord has many faces, from the strong Cernonas to the delightful Pan and Osiris, Tyre, Anubis, Ra, Apollo, Odin, and thousands more. He guards and guides us and resides in each man and woman of every race in every place. When thunder roars in the heavens and lightning cracks from the ground, the Lord and Lady dance the divine myth of creation so that we may remember them and know that we are never alone and that we are one. When the sun rises each morning, we bask in the joy of his love for us. And when the moon moves through her faces, we understand the cycle of birth, growth, death, and rebirth, as is the nature of all things, and we honor her power. But as the humans began to grow and prosper, they forgot about their divine parents. <clears throat> Although the Lord and Lady called to their children, they did not listen. They were lost, fighting the demons they themselves had created. Not wishing to abandon their children, the Lord and Lady decided to create healers 
and workers of harmony among the humans to remind them of the divine source and to show them the way home to the arms of the mother. Within each special soul would be the remembrance of the great work, to love, create, and move in harmony. And so the Lord and Lady drew forth energy from the realm of angels, the realm of power animals, the realm of the dead, and the realm of humans, instilling these special souls with the divine energy of the presence through miracles of magic. These beings of power were called witches. Our Lady taught the witches the wisdom of the universe. They were instructed how to cast a circle of art and how to communicate with spirit because the humans of earth had forgotten. She taught them to talk to the dead, how to honor their ancestors and succession of teachers, and how to focus the mind and cast a spell. In each brain, she imprinted the patterns of all the energies in the solar system and how to work magic by the moon and the stars. The Lord taught the witches how to meld with the elements and spirits of air, fire, earth, and water, and to commune with the animal and plant kingdoms. He taught them weather magic and the healing arts with energy and plants, and most of all, like their ancestors before them, he taught them how to protect themselves and how to survive. Each witch was given the rites of purification and the ability to tap into his or her lineage of creation. Together, the Lord and Lady <clears throat> gave the humans the witch's pyramid to know, to will, to dare, and to be silent because they knew that not all the humans on earth would welcome these special beings of magic and love. The instruction complete, the witches were sent to every culture and every tribe on the planet Earth, being born of the people but carrying the mission of the divine. In this way, they have been known by many names and many races, yet in soul, witches they remain. Above all, they were given the message that the goddess lives. Even with the great work of the magical people, perfect love and perfect trust did not come easily. Many religions rose among the people to honor the mother and father, but each in turn cast out our mother, thinking that worshiping the god alone would bring them the riches and strength they needed. In his disappointment of their actions, the Lord abandoned each religion, allowing them to crumble and die in the dust of the earth. Rather than create beauty and joy, the humans sought to destroy one another, to spread the sickness of greed and despair among their own. They forgot that the power within is greater than the power over one another. The people would not listen to the witches. Instead, they burned them. Thus, over times of great trial and suffering, the witches became the hidden children, conducting their rites in secret, lest they risk capture and death at the hands of the fearful humans and their terrible dogma. As the world grew dark with the ignorance and hate created by the humans, an evil arose like black steam from the cauldron of their minds, covering the planet with negative energy. The lady whispered to the witches that they should draw power from her body of the moon, and the Lord enchanted the vibrant rays of the sun to instill them with strength. The moon and the sun, they said, are beacons of the great work. As long as they shine, you may draw from them whatever energy you may need, and when you look to these symbols in the heavens, you will know that we are within you. There is no part of you that is not of the gods. And so it was that once a month, when the moon grew full, the witches celebrated in secret and remembered the blessings our mother bestowed upon them and worked magic to fulfill their divine mission of the great work. In these rites, the witches called forth the essence of the Lord and Lady to help them take care of themselves, their families, the planet, and their friends. Four times a year as the cross quarters, Samhain, Candlemas, Beltane, and Lamas blossomed, blossomed with bonfires across the land. The witches celebrated the festivals of fire in honor of our Lord and his love and protection for all the children of the earth, as well as the birth of our mother from the void and the divine dance that brought all humans into creation. At the four quarters of the seasons, Yule, Astara, Summer Solstice, and Maven, the witches honor the solar cycle of life and the gifts of the earth through celebrations of thanksgiving. For 8,000 years we have done this, for our essence is in every shaman, every magi, every priest, and every priestess who carries the hidden truth of perfect love and perfect trust within their souls. We are the craft of the wise. When it is our time to leave the earth plane, Our Lady sends a guide to escort us to the summer land. From the presence that moves and flows through the Lord and Lady, we continue to learn the mysticism of the universe so that we may return, life after life, to serve our brothers and sisters, to remind them that they are only visiting here, and that each action, not each piece of, piece of gold garnered, 
is the way, the truth, and the light. And in each lifetime, spirit guides us through learning experiences, preparing us along the way for our individual missions. Sometimes we are born among our own kind, but more often than not, we are born among the unbelievers. We are born to show them the way home. It is by our actions, not our preaching, that the journey is made. We are the witches, the representatives of wisdom's growth in our, on our planet. Because the religions of the world have failed to recognize the great work and to see our mother in all things, the Lord and Lady gave us our own religion. This is our greatest test. We are the hidden children. We are the people, the power, and the change. And we have incarnated every race and in every culture and will continue to do so until the end of time. We are the weavers and we are the web. We cannot be stopped because we are the presence and, and the presence is us. We are the divine angels of earth. We are the heavens and the stars. <clears throat> we are the earth, the air, the fire, and the water. We are the spirit. We are one and we have come to guide you home. For we are the witches, back from the dead, so mote it be. So yeah, that's the story. And I like it. I enjoyed reading it. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me read it to you. And um, this probably won't be the last time that I read something from this book. Because I'm really, like I said, I'm really enjoying this book. And I highly recommend it for those interested in Wicca for those who identify as Wiccan. Um, yeah. The Ultimate Book of Shadows for the New Generation, Solitary Witch by Silver Ravenwald. It's, it's pretty good. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, anyways, I hope everything is going good with you guys. I hope everything is going great with you guys, and I hope you all had a good Valentine's Day. That was almost a week ago now. I, my Valentine's Day actually turned out better than I thought it would, so I guess that's that's a good thing. I guess it just goes to show you that things can change and everybody deserves happiness. So I will post another video soon, and I hope you guys are enjoying your lives and are happy and healthy. Blessed be...